Welcome to El Toro Music YouTube channel. I'm sitting with Will Lawton, who's a local singer-songwriter extraordinaire and has a couple of uh, CDs out yeah. already on a couple of record labels. He's going to tell us more about it. Welcome, Will. Henry, all right. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> yeah. It's really fascinating to find out how people got bitten by the bug and when and what caused them to get into music. How did it all start for you? Yeah, so music for me goes back as far as I can remember, and it's come through my dad, who self-taught himself how to play the piano in the 1950s. Well, um, so he, in the back page of the News in the World, the number one hit from America would come over and written form after the Second World War, and um, chords and tabs. Um, and the lyrics yeah. and with no radio cd all, all that stuff before that era people would get my dad to play their songs that they loved generally from america um from the newspaper basically i think once a week the song wow. came out and he learned how to play just music from hearing it and through the through the through the chords and uh and then they'd have sing song. There are pubs in every every uh, pianos in every pub in those in those so days. So that um, was like the UK's introduction to American music was through him, in a way. Ninety five percent. Wow. <laughs> no, if you lived in Wolverhampton in the Midlands, then it's quite or wherever he lived at that time. But in the, yeah, in the Black Country in the Midlands, really. Okay. Yeah. Was he a songwriter? Yes, not as songwriter like I am. I I I would that I write a lot of songs. He's more of a jazz pianist, really. Mm. But he did write songs and he wrote his own music, so he would write original music. But he, he just gave me the knowledge of how to play the music that I wanted to play, and that caught, picked me up as I was dropping the, the theoretical side of music. Um, that allowed me to keep going, and then um, I started writing writing songs. And then, as I turned into my teenage years, music for me got lit up by... I really liked heavy rock. I liked, like... Guns and Roses and um, oh yeah, uh, Pearl Jam. Um, all that grunge scene came along, and that was the first time that I really started Led Zeppelin. I, I where I was going like and buying complete catalogues and like immersing myself in music. Uh, what um, genre would you class your music as? It folk or um, I, I'm. It, it it depends who I'm playing with. It depends what outfit I'm playing. Like, there is a folk element. Um, there's quite a rock element, really, but we're piano based, so it falls into singer songwriter. But I played like drum and bass and jazz elements as well. It's, it's um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty diverse depending on what project I'm 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 performing at that moment. Yeah, good. But genre pigeonholing has always been quite a tricky thing for me <laughs> to navigate. Absolutely. Do you yeah. get nervous playing live? Um, yeah. Yeah, I do get nervous playing live. Sometimes not, and then sometimes I get really nervous playing live. Um, it, yeah, it's always there's always a little fizz beforehand, and I have a little point before I'm going to go on stage where I can't. I struggle to talk and hold conversation because my mind just becomes. I think it's why there is a grit such a thing as a green room. You just want to just. I like to just like take myself away. Yeah, I like to stretch a little bit Mentally and have some time to myself. And um, when I don't get that, I don't feel quite. As, as prepared so I, I just like mm. to be on my own really ideally um, so that I don't have to talk and I can let, live with this little sort of fizzy an, a, anticipation that's sort of bubbling up inside me yeah so can you explain what is your approach to songwriting and you know is there any specific methods or you know what inspires you yeah my approach to songwriting so I've written songs since I was a teenager it was not until my 20s that i started to s deliver them in public really i had a quite i to overcome the challenge of my own voice and confidence of my own voice like can i really sing my own music and then i had to battle my own my own stuff telling me like well, why is that arrogant going out and just <laughs> singing your own stuff, expecting people to sit there and listen? It's like I had to <laughs> go through some strange things before I got to the point of like, no, I'm going to like own this and I'm going to go and sing my own music and like <laughs> and own it. So, so it took a little while to get going. Um, 
but then my songwriting approach I didn't really like it goes quite deep and my whole career has been built around this now because I now work as a music therapist as well now and I write with songwriting with people as well to help explore their own their own stuff their own mm. mental health and their yeah. own their own stuff and that, so songwriting for me is actually a very deep thing I didn't know what I was doing for, for years I was writing songs and I was recording them in bands I was going and performing them and sticking them out there putting them out and <laughs> all, all, all that stuff I was just doing didn't really know why but it's only been in recent years that all that time I've written like I've probably released a hundred songs um different albums five albums six albums different EPs and um but all that time I was writing songs to try and make sense of my own life that's what I'm doing I'm trying yeah. to just make sense of what I'm experiencing on planet earth yeah um, I didn't realize really I was doing that and I've gone through different phases of life I've gone through my 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 music discography from when I started putting music out in my 20s to now and late 40s there's like 25 years of it's changed a lot but there's my life's pretty mapped up if someone wants to really like <laughs> find out what different phases you're going through you, it's all laid out there it's like yeah. a diary really because your song goes through your different phases heartbreak addiction um Good times, bad times, everything. You write about the whole lot yeah. thrown in there. It's like there it all is. You want to start like exploring, there, there it's there. But that's what that's what fundamentally is. I'm trying to make sense of it all. Yeah. Um, and when when I write a song, even more so now, God, sometimes they're almost like prophetical, like in terms of I, I write stuff I don't even know what it's about, and then like two years later, it's like oh, that's what I. That's what I was saying back then. That's like sometimes you don't really even know what what it is you're saying. It's quite a mysterious thing that it operates in the subconscious. You don't know really, from where, yeah, yeah. But I am um, I I try and write truthfully and try and write through my own experience and try and write for myself. Um, because that's my form of expression. Yeah. I, I, that, that is me on planet Earth. That's who Earth. you are. Yeah. That's who I am. And when I'm dead, mm. I'm gone, then what's going to be left? My, an album with my band was called Fossils of the Mind. And it was, um, that's what I see them as. These songs are like, they are the, yeah. the, 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 the things that I'm going to be, my, li- my blueprint is going to be left behind in these, in, these, in these songs. So it does actually go quite deep, really. Yeah, um, and, and that's actually, on Spotify. The fossils of the mind. Fossils of the mind is on Spotify. Yeah, that's an album. Um, so, so it goes quite deep. But the the actual songwriting process, I love working with acoustic guitarists. I like. I can't really play the guitar very well, but the guitar is such a natural instrument to write songs on. But I write a lot just with with me and the piano. Mm. Um, I just sit down and I see what comes out and often the first thing is the thing to pay attention to and then my voice memos i used to use a dictaphone but now we've all got phones but my yeah. voice memos has got hundreds and i just capture ideas i stick them on my voice memo stick them on capture ideas and then now and again i'm somewhere i've got writer's block or i'm not feeling inspirational and i'll just flick through these little little ideas that i've had and suddenly you're just like nah, rubbish 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 and then now and again one just like oh no that's really nice i like what i did there and then i'll like revisit it read it and, and develop yeah. it and try and put some more meat on the bones try and put some i sing gobbledygook at the start i sing just nonsense and then i yeah. start sort of but i've got the shape of the melody there and then i'll like try and fill it fill in the words like what i'm like what's what am i feeling like saying really um yeah it's a fascinating process really yeah, but nowadays you can get full-on recording studios as an app on your phone, which is just incredible the way technology has improved. You can. I'm, okay. I, I still I use I use Logic and I, I record on on a, on my app on my i iMac. Um, but yeah, I, I know somebody. I remember reading recently someone that it was done and released and it went like platinum, whatever platinum sales. They did it all on their phone. Yeah. Like, like they are phenomenal. I don't re- I don't know my fingers are too fat to like try and navigate the phone <laughs> and the eyesight's like oh god oh. no I prefer a big screen <laughs> so more about the uh, the music therapy that you do yeah so I, I 
I worked with, I trained as a music therapist when I was about 40 years old. It was three years master's degree. And it, it was, it was through an experience with my grandmother when she was dying and I played her a favorite song. She was in a coma. I played her a favorite Bette Midler song and she came out of this like slumber that she was in. She was, she hadn't communicated for quite a while really. And I was sat by her bedside and, and she came up and she just sang this, this song and she said goodbye to me and my sister were at her bedside mm-hmm. and she died the next day. That was like our last communication with her, Whoa. but it like flicked the light on inside me of like music's, yeah, there's the entertainment side that I'd been doing and mm. performing and releasing music, but there was like this, this is deeper because that room could have been powerful burning down she would have sat in that bed she wouldn't have moved but a song pulled her reached into the last bit of her well self that she had on earth and it just connected with that something so deep that she effortlessly sat up opened her eyes and sang and um that that it's like it flicked on a a little light inside me about music's deeper and i was looking at the time for some for something, something more meaningful in my work um, and my life, what am I going to do for the rest of this time here? Mm. <laughs> I'm still well. I'm still like, I've got mm. plenty of working life left. What the hell am I going to do with it? And yeah. it, it just opened up this music therapy um, avenue. And I now run a practice based um, locally here called The Rhythm Practice. And I see, I work with a lot of teenagers. I work with adults. Of mental health, I work with um, gosh, so many different people suffering. Um, to, a way of a way of accessing something within them. It might be they might not play anything. They might not even want to sing. They might not want to do any music at all. They might have no, but they still have a relationship with music. They can yeah. still go on Spotify and show me what their favorite song is, and okay. we can use that as a way in. Uh, it's, emotional connection. Yeah, exactly. Speaking, yeah. And it's, so it's like you don't. It's not. It's not sitting there shaking, shake a tambourine at each other. And like, do you feel better for that? It's like, yeah. No, it's very much like, what, what's music mean to you? Share that with me and let's like go in that. And then stuff comes. Yeah. Like you, you think of a song when you're young, of like, I don't know, your first heartbreak. You can, there's often, there's often a, there's a tune that it's like, oh, every time that comes on, it's like, oh, it gets me every time. Oh, it's my, like, my <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever it is, it's like, but with that comes the emotion. Exactly, Suddenly you're back yeah. in that spot. You're in there. You can feel it again. And you, so it, it just yeah. connects deep with people. And I love yeah. writing song, songwriting with people in the therapeutic context. It's so different to doing it for myself, but to see people have to like analyze, like, what's that, what's the heart of the issue here? And like, what are you going to put into this song? And, yeah. Uh, and to get them most of them don't ever want to show it it doesn't it's not they're not doing it to put it on spotify they're doing it it's the process is the which i've realized i was doing all those years making sense of stuff that's why i believe in it is because it it's what i turned to for 25 yeah. years of my life um as a way of processing and making sense of stuff and it's yeah. it's it's real it's a real way of uh of just going through and what's what's real what's not what's what's important and the important stuff comes it can come into the songs and uh yeah it's a way of expressing it you can chuck anything in a song doesn't matter it's not going to hurt anyone it's just like you can't damage anyone it's just like throw in a song say whatever you want it's like it's just this vessel and you got it out people use it can do it with art writing but it's a way of just getting some of this stuff out putting it into a, a safe container and having a look at it and then do what you want with it. Save it, share it if you want to share it, or just chuck it in the bin and never go near it again, which yeah. is quite rare. People though, generally are like, they become quite quite attached to these things they've created, yeah, whether they it's share it or not. the process of doing it, isn't it? Just yeah. get your emotions out through music. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So there'll be a link to your music and a link to um, everything about you as far as people who want to follow Will Lawton. There'll be a link in the comments box below. And one last thing, if you can just give us some insights as to um, perhaps some direction for young up and coming songwriters like yourself, you know, advice or any kind of inspiration you can kind of spread on. If you write songs and you feel that it's something that's inside of you, then 
<laughs> the best advice is write and keep writing yeah. and keep writing and don't question what you're writing just write it first you can change it after but just throw it down throw it down throw it down use your voice memos on your phone save ideas because they pop away like bubbles you, you have an idea and you think oh, that's nice and you've, and you've got it but one interruption one phone call one email one thing of your phone and next thing like oh no it's gone i can't remember what it was i was what i was exactly. doing so like capture it capture it capture it on your phone we carry our phones around everywhere to, to capture stuff you want to start sharing it and for me i think places like open mics are amazing amazing platforms to they're everywhere there's to there's, test it out to test it audience. start testing get it out of your bedroom try and go to the open mic first do you <clears> like it is the audience attentive a good open mic will be non-judgmental um and very accepting because they everyone in that room will understand that you're there to experiment um and they won't be critical they'll let you make mistakes they will they see through all that. They're not looking for that's what the beauty of it. You see music in its rawness. You see people like that are raw and vulnerable, like taking their first step out into public with their music. Mm. Um, so good open mics are, are, are wonderful places to to start exploring and start honing. So even if you don't play an instrument, just write because you can work with someone who does. Exactly. I've just helped on helping someone at the moment, a, a girl who sings beautifully, but she can't play an instrument. She needs musicians to her, so a teenage girl. And, and um, I just saw, met the other day, I saw a, a male piano player about her age. And he was playing beautifully. And I was like, you two, like, Get them together, you need yeah. to go together and meet me. Then hopefully they will. But yeah, you, it's it's the network. and We all need people sometimes. And you never know what the, what's going to spark the energy. And, and also, I guess, to do it for yourself, because I can't offer any advice on commercial success go and speak to somebody else because I I've had very little commercial success. I've had like, what is success? I don't know. Yeah. Success if success is being able to really in the music is being able to make lovely connections, play in some beautiful beautiful concerts, release music and have a, a good chunk of my life dedicated to it, then that's yeah. I'm I'm rich. But in terms of Absolutely. multi-selling, like where's my music in the charts? Where's where's my bank balance as a reflection of the thing? No. So I can't offer guidance on that side of it. Um, apart from it's it's important. It, it's good for you. Yeah. It's good for you if and you enjoy market it. Market yourself and just get out there. Yeah, just keep doing it, but make yeah. sure you're enjoying it and make sure that you've got good energy with the people you're collaborating with. Do your best to shine the best you can because yeah. That's actually what people take. People people like it, and they they that's what they that's what you want to see someone doing on stage. You want to see someone I want someone to like floor me, yeah. and like I'll they'll hit a spot. Next thing I'm like, oh my god, I'm wiping away a tear. Yeah. Like, oh, they just hit a nerve there. And, and you want to have that effect on people as well. As yeah, a yeah. Or whether it's Which a rock, hair, rock, whatever it is, you want to be like with smiling, go with the hair's got the back of your neck, and you're yeah. like, oh, that's a lovely like moment, and that's yeah. what you're looking for as an audience member, isn't it? As a Absolutely. And you take from you get that, and it, it comes into it, it. Osmosis, I guess. It's like it, it, it jumps. That yeah. energy jumps. The circle of life. It is the <laughs> circle of life. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks for that, Mike. Yeah, that was brilliant. If you want to know more about Will Lawton and his music? All the links below in the comments box, and let us know what you want to see, what you want to hear. Look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah.